Mr. Prime Minister, then why were the gates left open for these terrorists to run in and wreak havoc all over Israel? And it took eight hours for you to respond. If you were so clear on Hamas wanting to kill Jews 365 days a year, every minute of every day, why in the world weren't you ready? And why were you supporting funding to go to Hamas? It makes no sense. And actually, to Carville's point, I just question at this point what he would do to stay in power because he has done a number of things in his government leading up to the war to stay in power that many say are naked moves that are just completely corrupt to okay. stay in power. Now he's in a war. Oh, you can't move him now because we're in the middle of a war. What next? Well, th this is exactly when they need new leadership. They need new leadership. And the White House knows this because you have a guy whose very political existence has been centered around security. And so this is a guy that oversaw the greatest failure uh, of, of, of intelligence in Israeli history, led to more deaths because of his intel failure of Jews than any time since the Holocaust. He knew that this attack was coming for a year. They had the plans in his government for the year written down how Hamas was going to do it. They knew this was coming for a year. And not only did they do nothing, they had a meeting in Doha, Netanyahu's people, in Doha in September, less than a month before these attacks took place. And the Qataris asked Netanyahu's government, does Netanyahu still want us to send money to Hamas? And Netanyahu's government said, yes. Well, come on. Yes. Please keep sending money to Hamas. Keep funding Hamas. The, the Israelis, the Netanyahu government had been in on Doha funding Hamas. You know, we sit back and we're like, oh, my God, what in the world is Qatar doing? They're supposed to be our ally. And then we find out in the New York Times two days ago that actually it's Netanyahu who's telling Hamas to keep funding, keep funding Hamas. So, Israel so to keep funding Hamas. Israel to keep funding Hamas. So, so and, and, and by the way, we still haven't gotten an answer from anybody in the government on why after 9-11, it took three minutes for our first responders to get there. After a school shooting in Nebraska, it took three minutes to lock the school down, five minutes for the cops to have the place around it, 10 minutes to shut down the entire town. And that's the story across America. There is no answer. They have no answer. They have no, and this whole thing, I will worry about that. No, no, this is what we keep, keep getting told. A guy that was so incompetent that he allowed the worst killing of Jews since the Holocaust, he knew the attack was coming for a year and did nothing about it. He told Qatar to send hundreds of millions of dollars to Hamas weeks before the attack. And then when the attack came, he didn't do a damn thing for eight hours while women were getting raped, while concert goers were getting butchered, while old women were, were being taken hostage. Live on Facebook. While, while young boys uh, were, were seeing their parents shot dead. And this is that now who's government. This, Richard Haas, this whole security argument doesn't work. And, and James Carville is exactly right. It's something that I keep asking myself, and they go, oh, we can't do anything until after the war. You have a guy that allowed this to happen. It was on his watch. He asked Doha to fund Hamas. His government waited eight hours to, to, to go down and answer the calls of women being raped and children being gunned down. And he's saying, oh, well, we got to get through the war. No, he's incompetent. And the Israelis don't even like him. They want him out. The question is, when are they going to get the guy responsible for the worst killing of Jews since the Holocaust out 
and bring in responsible leadership that the United States can work with.